Now we are going to talk about one of the most successful British artists of all time who is currently celebrating 65 years in the music industry. Who else but Sir Cliff Richard? But despite all his years of success, he's told BBC Breakfast in a special interview this morning that he's got no plans to retire, even though he is now 83. In fact, he's about to release a new album, a book and a cinema tour. Charlie has been to meet him. Cliff, lovely to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah, and you're going to teach me how to sit properly in a, in a chair because you've got, you've got a bit of theatrical experience. What, what's it? Well, it's something to do with theatrical. It depends on how your back is. I, have, I used to have trouble with the lower part of my back. Ah. And this chair is really not good for it because normally I'd have a cushion behind it okay. pushing me to sit straight. Ah. So the only answer I can give you is to sit as straight as you can. I'll try and... How am I doing? <laughs> is that all right? Uh, yeah, but the jacket's bad. Is it... <laughs> OK, this isn't going well so far. <laughs> What's wrong with the jacket? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How's the back now, by the way? It's good now. And it leads us nicely onto the, the question about how you are. I mean, you, you've just had a birthday, right? Yes, I have. I mean, I'm, I, I can't believe it, really. I'm, I'm going on tour, and um, it's my 65th year singing. It's so funny why we don't talk birthday led me to be 83. And are we comfortable with 83? How's, how's the Cliff Richard mindset at 83? I don't know how to... I, I mean, I feel fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm going on tour. I've got a book out. I've got an album coming out. And when my tour starts, they're going to film it and I'm going to be in cinema. So what do I feel? Fabulous. Does the word slowing down ever have anything to do with your life? Yes. I have, in the last few years, tried to slow down. In other words, I don't do as much. Like what? Well, for instance, in, um, if I'm going to do a tour, I try to ha make sure that I have a day off every other day so that I'm not ca constantly singing. You know, I, I can't do that anymore. And obviously, I don't want to retire, but I'm probably going to stop, like a red light. See the red light? You stop. If it, if it goes green, you think, OK, I'll go now. So I've left myself open to still be available to do things as long as I can. Fortunately, I can still sing. That's the main thing. And I don't need AI for help. Yet. I won't need it, because one minute that I can't sing, I won't do it anymore. I I'm not sure that I would want to put out a record that I hadn't actually sung in tune on. Do you know what I mean? If you can't do it anymore, just be graceful and move out. On the hologram theme, yeah. OK, which may or may not happen, what era, Cliff Richard, would you like it to be? Would it be the 20-year-old, the 18-year-old the, the Cliff Richard, or the 50-year-old, or the... Where, what era I, would you like to maintain? I think I would like to maintain the 80s. Got my silver crying, talking, sleeping, walking, living up. Got to do my best to please her, just cause she's living up. Do you have an exercise regime? Like, when you get up in the morning... Because famously, some, some performers who, who perform to a, you know, a greater age have a, have a regime they stick to, which is how they keep yeah. doing the job. Do you do that? Yeah, well, in a way, when you talk about getting out of bed, for instance, I never get up without stretching. I stretch my knees this way, that way, pull them up with my stress, that way, that way. I put my arms behind my back to straighten the thing. And when I get out of bed, OK, I we'll put, go with it. Put, we'll, we'll, we'll follow I, you. You can do it. I put my calf muscles against the bed and straighten up. That's what I do. And the vocal exercises I do were given to me uh, by Olivia Newton-John as a birthday gift from her coach. And the other thing that's really easy to do in the car, it's embarrassing if someone's sitting next to you, is to croak. Because your vocal cords are never as relaxed as when you're doing that. It's just the first. <laughs> it's what just, am I doing? It here? sounds a bit like you're. It sounds like you're not well. To be honest with you. <laughs> but that's why you can't really do it in public. No, because everyone would be worried. They're thinking, oh, I'm just thinking Cliff Richard, and he's, he's not well. Not, he's sick. Yes. <laughs> well, people think I'm sick anyway. But what the heck? If someone were watching this interview, she goes out on BBC Breakfast, and they'd never heard of Cliff Richard. Younger, maybe the young people. How would you describe yourself? A lot of people that I meet, younger folks, like below the age of 25, say, do you still record? 
And I, I have to say to them, well, my album is in the charts, but it's not your fault you don't know, because probably you've not heard me. So I've been fighting for years to see if we can get some airplay on radio, because rock and roll and radio were hand and glove in those old days. You made a record hoping and wishing that it would be played. And of course it was played. And the higher you got into the record chart, the more your record was played on radio. Not, no ages counted. So do you think your industry is ageist? Because people might say now, you've got examples, you've got the Rolling Stones. Yeah. You've got people who are playing on and on and on. And, and they can still on. do it, you see, that's the thing. Yeah. The Rolling Stones are still probably the biggest, most popular band on the planet because they can still do it. Mick still sings live, they still play live, and that's what I try to do. For instance, I'm singing all 14 of my number ones. So everybody in that audience that's coming to see me will most have probably bought at least five of them, and they're going to know them. In your book, you talk a lot about Elvis because you're yes. a massive fan, and he was an inspiration to you. He was. Uh, I think I know the answer to this. Do you do an Elvis impersonation? I used to try to do it, and I think sometimes when I was still at school, at 15, we used to be, do a, a end of term party thing, and uh, we, I had a group called the Quintos, five of us, and we'd sing boot doo wop stuff, you know, Eddie, my love, all that, and then somebody would say, Harry, do the Elvis thing, and I'd get up and go, oh, and I, you know, it, I think I did quite well at it, but I was only 15 then. Come on, pretty baby, let's move it and move it. Was there ever a point, Cliff, in your career when you sort of thought about your path as a, as a performer, where you thought the, the nice guy, the kind of the clean living guy image, or the other route, you know, the kind of bad boy, uh, you know, the music industry or whatever? Was there ever a kind of conscious decision to go, do you know what, I'll be that? No, I didn't ever want to be bad. We're all going on a summer holiday. No more working for a week or two. And even in the early days, they tried to pl plaster me as a rebellion. And I'm thinking, no, I never had anything to rebel. I had a great family life. And when I'm with my sisters, sometimes we've talked about, do you ever remember being unhappy? And none of us can remember that. It's been lovely chatting. If I said, would you give us something, just a line of something, to sing us out of this interview? I'll tell you what, it, it's, it's... Right from early days, from the moment I was born, I would wake my guitar in the early, early morning and go down to the fields and play, yay, yay. Sitting down there with my lungs strumming, I could see the people for miles around coming to hear me sing my music and play, yay, yay. Delightful. <laughs> thank you, Cliff. OK, thank you. Really nice chatting. Thank you. And I didn't use artificial insemination. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best line of all. That's a whole different ball game. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I think that would have been a different story. So to speak. Yeah. Well, that was quite a conversation. Yeah. Now, we, now we know what AI, st AI stands for. Yes, <laughs> it does. We were yeah. wrong. Slightly disappointed Charlie didn't join in with the singing. <laughs> uh, or is that... Uh, I think we had a lucky escape. Yeah, maybe we did. Uh, yeah. That was a lovely chat, wasn't it? Just what we needed this morning.